So in this step of the tutorial we're going to show you how to take shape files and I'm going to explain what those are in a moment and import them into Postgres, the database. And we're going to use a tool called OGR to OGR to do that. So shape files are a format that's been around, uh, created by the company called Esri, who are a famous geospatial company who make a lot of geospatial software uh, like ArcGIS, for example. It's a file format they created for storing spatial data, and it's now used in a lot of software, uh, all kinds of different software, open source, commercial software, for transferring data between two systems. Uh, it's a relatively simple, straightforward format, uh, but it's quite old. It's not very performant when you're looking at large uh, amounts of data. So we really need to take that data uh, and get it into somewhere where it will perform really well, which is in a spatial database where we can do all kinds of manipulation on it. So shapefiles, if you have a look at these files here, these are the ones we're going to use. These are actually from a, a new data set about to be released by the Ordnance Survey in the UK, who are the government mapping agency in the UK. Uh, and it's for a product they call OS OpenMap, which has uh, kind of similar features to something like OpenStreetMap. And so what I've got here is all the shape files for a particular area of the UK, the SU area which is around Southampton. And you can see there are lots of different files in here and you can kind of read and recognize what's in them. So we've got buildings and roads and tidal information and uh, surface water or woodlands, all kinds of different features uh, stored in lots of files. And you'll see for each shape file, which is the SHP file, there are actually, if I order it by name, there are actually four different files here. You can see for building. So these four different files are all part of the shapefile format and they hold different information uh, about the shapefile. So the, the SHP file actually holds the real spatial data behind it. The DBF file holds all things like uh, building names and textual or binary data, uh, uh, Boolean data against all of it. It's often called metadata. The PRG file is quite an important file and you need that as part of your shapefile. And it tells programs that load up your shapefile what projection you are using. So projections are the kind of how we map a globe world to some kind of flat world or some kind of different world. And the projection we're going to be using is the one the Ordnance Survey uses, in the, or these files use, is the Ordnance Survey projection in the UK. And we're going to transform those using OGR to OGR into the format that Mapbox use. And we'll talk about that more in a moment. But you can see here uh, in all these files, in terms of the size of them, uh, the largest file is the buildings file at 135 meg. And in total, this is 370 meg. That not, might not sound quite large, but if you start to load those into a program, it starts to perform not very well, especially if you're zooming in and out. Uh, so we want to get them into Postgres so that Mapbox Studio can perform as well as we possibly can get it to. So to give you an idea how large an area this is, if we just open up QGIS quickly, and I'll load in the roads file for this database. In QGIS, there's lots of ways of loading data in here down the left-hand side. We're going to open shape files from the file system. And I want the roads. Just open up the SHP file and it will find all the others because they're named the same. And there we are, that's the roads. So this is, uh, as we said, an area near Southampton in the UK. And this is the water down here. Obviously we've got no uh, and anything other than roads here at the moment. But you can see it's not a massive area uh, and already you're looking at 300 meg for all those different layers. So as I said, we're going to use a tool called OGR to OGR, which was installed as part of the QGIS install we did earlier. We're going to use that to load up the shapefiles, transform the projection, and we'll talk about that more in a moment, and import them into uh, Postgres. But before we can use that tool, we actually need to set up something in Windows so that that tool knows how to get uh, some files it relies upon from a library called GDAL. Now the quickest way to do this is to set what's in Windows called an environment variable and we have to call uh, we have to set one that the G, the OGR to OGR tool is expecting which is one called gdal underscore data. I'll talk you through this it sounds a bit complicated but it's not too bad. We're going to start off by going and finding where the gdal data files are and so they were actually installed as part of Postgres. So if you go and find your Postgres install you'll see in here there's a gdal data folder. Okay, Basically this is going to be used uh, by OGR to OGR to read uh, a big list of uh, spatial projections to know what we're talking about when we uh, ask it to transform a projection. So if you just copy uh, that path there, hit your Windows button and start typing environment, you'll see you get two options up here and we want to edit the system environment variables. 
it'll bring up this dialog here. Let's just get everything else out of the way. And right down the bottom is a button called environment variables, and we want ones at the system level here. So create a new one, all in uppercase, call it ggl gdel underscore data, and paste the path to that folder in there. Now it's important you do all this before you open up a command line, which is the next thing we're going to do, because otherwise the command line you'd already opened uh, won't know about that environment variable. So next we're going to use OGR to OGR to actually do the import. Now OGR to OGR is a command line tool, so the easiest way to get it uh, get to where you need to actually run it is if you look in uh, where you installed QGIS, so in my case that's program files QGIS, there's a bin directory which is where all the binary files are and you'll see there's an exe called OGR to OGR but it's command line so we need to be able to get to that location on the command line. If you right click on the folder path at the top here hit your Windows button and type CMD and open up a command prompt. There are lots of different ways of doing what I'm doing here. Obviously if you know what you're doing you're not going to need me. Uh, so CD change directory, paste the path in and we're there. Now if I type OGR to OGR you'll see it finds the file. What it's spat out there is the really helpful help file uh, which is generally gobbledygook like most command line help files are. Uh, to actually understand OGR to OGR and I'm going to show you one example of here and I don't pretend to be a, an OGR to or a, OGR uh, or a command line wizard here at all. Um, so you can go and find the documentation here at gdal.org and it will talk you through all the different parameters and variables that you can import into this. So let's just clear that out of the way. What we want to do here is to run OGR to OGR um, against a lot of files. Unfortunately OGR to OGR doesn't have a way built in of running against a whole load of files in one go. It's used to running one file at a time. So we're going to use a little bit of uh, Windows command line magic at, that's built into the Windows command line to be able to kind of loop through each individual file that we want and run the OGR to OGR command for it. So the way we do that is we type 4. I'm going to do a create a variable called percent %f which you'll see what it's used for in a moment. In and now I need to give it the path, the directory of where all my shape files are. So again, if I copy that and I paste it in. And now I need to put a wildcard on the end. So this is a, a kind of string that will match all the shape files in that directory. So I put a slash on the end of the directory, then uh, star dot shp. And that will find all the shape files in that directory. And for each one, it will put it into this variable f. And when we loop through this loop, and ask it to do, so it's do is the next thing, this gdel command, it will do that for each and every file. So for centf in all these shape files, do this. And this is where we start writing our gdel command. So uh, not our gdel, our OGR to OGR. So OGR to OGR. Now we're going to tell it a number of different things that we need to do. The first one is we're going to tell it what format to output in. So hyphen f open quotes post GraphQL. Make sure that's spelt right and that you've got the casing right, otherwise it won't work. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to tell Postgres or tell the Postgres writer it's got in here all the details it needs to be able to actually get to the database. So the first one is the host. It's installed on my machine, so localhost is the host we need. Then we need a user, which is Postgres, because that's the user we created is when we did the Postgres installer. Password, again, you created this when you did the Postgres install. Mine was uh, password. The database, so DB name equals, mine was called tutorial. And that's it, that's all the things that Postgres needs to know about. So we've told it what format we're outputting in, we've given the format some information. Now we're going to tell it what projection we want uh, the data actually put into Postgres under. And you do this uh, doing the dash T underscore SRS. So projections are however we take the world, which is obviously a sphere or a sphere shape, uh, and reproject it so it works on flat surfaces like screens and maps. 
or other kinds of projections. There are thousands of these used for either different particular countries or different uses like military um, or the one we want to use which is called the web Mercator so used for web based maps usually. Um, so that everyone knows what they're talking about when they're talking about different projections rather than using textual names uh, you will see that they have a code and so what I've typed in here is, is to find out what Mapbox supports. So Mapbox use the web Mercator and their code is EPSG900913. So we copy that and put that in. Now we could put the data in in its, uh, in its source projection into Mapbox Studio but if we do Mapbox Studio will have to reproject it on the fly all the time which will be slow. So we're going to put it into post in the format we want it to be in, in the projection we want it to be in, uh, which is this one ready for use. So the last thing we need to do uh, before we put the actual file in itself is we need to put a special thing into OGR to OGR to handle uh, the particular data I'm using but quite often the data you'll be using uh, and a particular um, thing that PostGIS will do in terms of validating the data. Um, so this is something I had to learn. Uh, it didn't happen on all the files I needed to import. It was only actually one particular shape file, but it's good to put in uh, because it just gets rid of this problem. It's to do with multi polygons. Uh, and if you don't know about those, don't worry too much, but it, it's something that PostGIS needs to be able to read this data and store it in the right way. So the way we do this is another um, OGR to OGR command. So uh, hyphen NLT and then we're going to write promote underscore to multi. And that's basically telling OGR to OGR that when it needs to go and do this fix basically. It means we won't have to run it on every single file but it also means we don't have to go and manually do the files that don't work on it. So the last thing we need to do is give it the actual uh, file that we'll be importing to uh, the to OGR command. And we do that just by using the placeholder percentf. So let's read through that. So for percentf in these files, do this OGR command in the format of Postgres. Here's the details of Postgres. Here's the target projection we want to output into. And here's the little fix we want to do. And here's the final file. That should be ready to go now. So if we just hit enter on the keyboard, You'll notice it got it all wrong, and that's because I spelt my Postgres user wrong, which I'm sure you all spotted. Put a T in there, try again. So you'll see it started on buildings. Buildings is obviously, or building, sorry, is one of the largest files as we know, so it's going to take a while to run that. And it will run that OGR to OGR command on every single file that's in this directory over here uh, for the ordnance survey data we've got. Yeah, it might take quite a while, as you kind of see here. It's uh, using quite a lot of my CPU here and a lot of disk activity, or it will be in a second. So it might take a while depending on what data source you're importing, how big it is, how fast your computer is. So we'll leave that running. So you see it runs through each file in turn. I think we're almost there now. There you can see it's finished. Now obviously it ran each file as a separate command so you need to go back up through them all just to make sure there are no errors uh, like we had the first time we tried to run it. So that error there is just oh, when I spelt it wrong. That's where we started with all of them. So it's gone all the way through, no errors. Obviously you need to check that. Usually the errors are quite helpful like the first one we had where it was telling us it couldn't connect. Now all our data should now be in our Postgres data. So we can actually start moving on now to starting to see some of this data, uh, which is going to be the next stage.